ICARTT versus User Input Delay. User Input Delay is a new real-time performance counter metric from Microsoft for Windows 10 1809 Plus and Server 2019 and newer. What is this metric and why is it so important to you as a Citrix administrator? Let's delve into the challenge of measuring end user experience to help us understand what this metric means. Before we begin looking at the Microsoft metric, Citrix has a metric that measures this and more called ICA Round Trip Time or ICA RTT for short. I'll look into how this metric works and what's the difference between the two. ICA RTT has two components that combine to give us our result. The first is network latency. This is the amount of time a network packet is sent from an endpoint and received from the server. The second component is how long an application takes to process the request and return the result. In this example, the application has a delay when clicking the file menu. The amount of time spent here is added on to the metric. Once we get a response from our input, this is sent back to the user and that total is calculated. ICA RTT has a few drawbacks. The first is the sample rate. ICA RTT is sampled about every 15 seconds and the ICA last latency is sampled about every 20 seconds. This causes these two values to go out of sync. As well, real-time fluctuations in network latency or actions within an application can cause these two values to show wild discrepancies, leading to the age-old question, why is my ICA RTT less than my network latency? In reality, ICA RTT wouldn't be lower, but at the time of the sample it was, and since then conditions have changed and we need to wait for the next sample. We can see in the queries that the ICA RTT is stating a metric of 1000 milliseconds and the network is stating 39 milliseconds. If this was the moment you sampled these metrics, you'd be misled and might think that the application was the cause of the delay. But in the ping window, we can clearly see the delays with the network. Our network latency counter has simply not caught up and with these delays, it is almost impossible to determine what the user is actually experiencing. This brings us back to user input delay. This metric is explained in technical details here, but I'm going to try and explain how it works from my experience. This counter measures how long a process takes to respond to user input, such as mouse or keyboard usage. In most cases, it is able to accurately measure how long it takes the UI to respond to input. The measurements it takes are in real time, and there is no lag like in the Citrix counter. This gives us the ability to accurately determine whether the application is operating efficiently. Going back to our notepad application, I'm going to try and visualize this metric. Clicking on the file text will cause the application to try and render the menu. For some reason, there is a delay in this process. The metric started the timer and will finish when the UI returns. The application took 7.934 seconds to process our request. Normally, this would be a dozen milliseconds or so. We can eliminate the network as a cause of our application slowness and begin to address the delay properly. The user input delay is a lightweight metric built into Windows. The metric is real time and measures the responsiveness of your application. You can measure the responsiveness on a per process level, a per session level, or overall on a per server level. What does user input delay look like in practice? The best way to demo user input delay is with Control Up. Control Up has the metric built in and can display it in all three views, the process view, the session view, and the computer's view. Let's explore these values within Control Up, starting with the computer's view. I have two servers with some load on them. Control Up displays the average user input delay and the maximum user input delay for all users on these servers. We can easily see that one of the servers has a longer input delay than the other. The number of users on one server is four times that, and we can see the consistency in this server having higher values. It may be worth evaluating whether capping out the number of users on a server would bring the user experience down to a more agreeable level. In the sessions view, we can see which users are having the highest level of user experience degradation. If a user were to encounter consistently high values, it would be worth talking to the user to see their workflow and profiling it for further optimization opportunities. Lastly, in the process view, we can see the individual processes themselves and their delay. If session sharing were enabled, we could see if the user session was slow overall or just an individual process within that session. The last point to touch on is ControlUp's automation platform. Because this metric is available within ControlUp, we can automate actions based on the value of this metric. 
For instance, if we see a user is having a poor experience, we can elevate the process priority, giving them more CPU cycles than their peers. As an example, I'm going to create a trigger against the process record. I'm going to specify the user input delay must be greater than 400 milliseconds and the process name must match one of these values. Next, we attach our script action to the trigger. Click Add on Follow-up Actions and select Run an Action under Type. And select your script name and then complete the trigger. The script that will execute the process priority change is simply two lines, with the argument being passed into it being the process ID. Let's see the automation in action. I've opened an Adobe Acrobat file with an embedded 3D model. The server has no load, so all CPU resources can be devoted to ensuring a good user experience, which is reflected in the user input delay metric. We can see manipulating the model has a high frame rate and is smooth, responding to clicks quickly. Now I'll introduce load to the server to cause contention. Control up shows us this in the CPU metric for the server. Once it rises to 100%, I'll try manipulating the model again. This time, we can see the frame rate is much lower, and we get stutter. The user input delay metric is showing a much higher value, reflective of the user experience. Once our user input delay metric has exceeded our threshold for 3 seconds, the process party will be elevated to above normal, and we can see our user experience has improved. And once again, this is reflected in the lower values in the user input delay field. Want to learn more? Visit www.controlup.com.